Hello and welcome to the return of the What Culture Football Video Podcast. I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture, joined by Adam Cleary and Michael Sidgwick from What Culture for a new series I'm calling It's All Kicking Off. <laughs> you already had a better, a better name for Although it. Although table football, because it's a table. <laughs> it's the best I had. It's all kicking off. Yeah, yeah all right, we'll go with that. So if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to What Culture Football yeah. in the iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from for daily football podcasts discussing a whole range of topics. But today I'm joined by Adam Cleary and Michael Sidgwick to discuss something very close to their hearts that is, well, constantly breaking it. Newcastle United. Now, where are we in terms of of the situation with Newcastle United because there was meant to be an ongoing takeover. This right. is the can I, can I just Can I just stop you there? Right, If you're looking at the length of this video and you're thinking, I don't really have time to sit and watch all of this, you can just watch up until the next five seconds. Nobody knows, right? <laughs> Absolutely nobody knows. The club don't seem to know. The potential bidders don't seem to know. None of the national press know. The local press certainly don't know. All the in-the-know accounts don't know. This dentist that's over in... Dubai, who reckons he's got an inside track on the bid, he doesn't know. Nobody, like nobody, actually knows. Nobody actually knows what is going on, and the season starts in five weeks. From the horse's mouth, the latest update on the takeover is that allegedly both parties, BZG and Mike Ashley, have done everything possible to make this happen. And if it doesn't happen, it is not through their fault. Now, I read that statement. They put out the statement. Well, they say they put out the statement. They put out the statement through this dentist who they just happen to know. <laughs> There's a Geordie dentist out in Dubai or Doha or somewhere. Who it's just... not like a radio host. Yes, but he's a dentist. It's like, imagine if we went through Mick Lowe's, basically. Like, imagine if like, <laughs> some Geordie billionaire was buying a club on the far side of the world and was putting out statements through Mick Lowe's. It's ridiculous, right? The statement... It's very Newcastle. Yeah, oh, this, all, this is all very Newcastle. We'll get to that. The statement was like... It was a bit of an update, and it said, yes, you know, with all the process I've been going through, blah, blah, blah. And then it finished about two sentences early, this statement. Because if it just had at the end, however, we've been, up, been able to reach an agreement, or you will, there will be more information coming soon, it would have made sense. But it just sort of stopped in the middle of whatever the point of it was supposed to be. It's just like, so every all parties involved have done everything they can, and if a deal is unable to be reached, it's not because it was through lack of trying. Message ends. That's it. Because nobody knows what is actually going on. It's clear from that statement they don't even know what's actually going it, on. It feels weird, as a, certainly as an outsider looking in. Um, it feels weird because it seems like every everything and everyone is waiting for everything and, and everyone else in terms of, you know, you, you, you've got a vacant managerial position. Yeah. <laughs> you're not signing any players. <laughs> that's yet. not that's not unusual. You're, yeah, great. Yeah, you're, you're selling players though. That's, Again, not, that's unusual. not unusual. But. I mean, what what needs? I mean, the, presumably the the takeover needs to be completed first, so then the person who's done the takeover can put a manager in position. Jose Mourinho. Yeah, I mean, it was <laughs> Steve, Steve Bruce. It was Steve Bruce yesterday. My God. It was Neil Redfern the day before that. Phil, Net, like literally every manager who's available right now. And by the way, straight away you can rule out Steve Bruce. By the way, Steve Bruce will categorically not be the Newcastle manager because there is no way in the midst of all of this. You know what's going through my head right now. The Kirby your enthusiasm, music. the theme music. <laughs> but but has Mike Ashley ever spent money to get a manager? No, but isn't Steve Bruce exactly the one manager that he would pay compensation for? Why? Because it's just so Newcastle. <laughs> <laughs> You've got Stop to look that. at this through the most cynical optics imaginable to arrive at what might be the conclusion here. What would Mike Ashley do? Forget about Jesus. What would Mike Ashley do? It's would he hire a young, up-and-coming foreign coach with maverick ideas on tactics and all the rest of it. No, he would pay money to hire a guy who's probably going to be out of a job in about eight months. He wants a firefighter. I think he realises that, like, this is it. I mean, whatever happens with this takeover, this is the end game for Mike Ashley. Like, he's not... Even in situations where... Like, he gave McLaren, like, near 100 million because he was going to have a bit of a go. And they did want Benitez to stay, albeit they weren't willing to, like, let him spend any money. But I think that's because... Whatever happens now, this is the end of it all for him. Like, he can't possibly keep the club going any longer than this. Like, he's not spending any... He's just... He's selling players for 30 million. He's allowing... Like, you are not going to get a Premier League striker well, you were for, for less money than you could have got Rondon for, but he won't spend it because he just doesn't want to. You and I were talking about Perez yesterday. Yeah. He's a, a quality, quality player. And, you know, 30 million in old money is pretty good. Tyrone Mings went yesterday for 24 million. Yes. Perez is our top scorer. It's just, it's just, it's going to cost, the thing is, it would cost them the thick end of, like, 
60 million to replace Rondon and Perez now. Like, if you want to get two players who guarantee at least 10 goals next season, how much are you going to pay in this market? At least that. And that's if you get, like, two relatively good buys. It's just... Do you remember when we flew back from Vegas? Yes. And the, Oh, you got because you were so excited. Yeah, because we airport. landed at London Stansted, or Heathrow, wherever it was, and all this takeover stuff had just happened. And, the, like, newspapers were reporting that it was done. Like, it wasn't just like, oh, Newcastle being taken over. It had gone from zero to done straight away, this story. It's done. Offer's been accepted. Just paperwork, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And in an hour and a half, it took us to fly back from Heathrow to Newcastle. I was like, genuinely a chance I'm going to get off this plane. Rafa signed a five-year deal and bought Kylian Mbappe. Like, that seemed yeah. genuinely realistic. And that was six weeks ago. Yeah. And since then, not a single thing has changed except that Rafa's left and started selling players. It, feel, it feels, you know, having only moved up to Newcastle two years ago and sort of observed them as a, as a club from, <laughs> from afar. What's that like? But now being like at the heart of it, obviously being surrounded by Newcastle fans and this sort of weird gallows humour that you all have. I, you know, I see these things and certainly you see it with other clubs where a takeover is mooted and it, it usually goes through or doesn't go through and is sort of dead in the water relatively swiftly. This, not necessarily this takeover, but talk of a takeover has been going on for years, it seems. And I still remember towards the end of last season, maybe, or maybe even like midway through last season, Ash, Mike Ashley being on Sky Sports and being like, look, I want someone to buy the club, but just no one wants to buy it. And, and yet he seems to constantly undercut himself because he keeps saying, all right, if you're going to buy the club, it's going to cost this much and mm. I'm not going to spend any more money because it's weird to invest in a club that I'm going to try and sell. But then at the same time, he's selling or losing or getting rid of some of the prize assets of the club. I'm just no? going to bring you up a little list here, right? Because Mike Ashley first tried to sell the club after the Keegan thing. So about a year and a half in, he said, oh, I'm putting the club up for sale. Oh, I've got it over my head here. You know, best intentions, not for me. Uh, we've gone we've gone and got bloody relegated. Oh, I'm really sorry about that. But don't worry, I'll sell the club and you can get Shearer in as manager, right? Any of that was 2007? No, eight, nine. Eight, 2009, eight, I yeah. want to say, when we went down, right? Where's someone, someone did a list the other day of all the different... Where is it? Since he first tried to sell the club, right, there have been takeovers reported from businesses in the UK, uh -huh. two in the USA, one in China, one in Mexico, one in Finland, one in South Africa, a load from the Middle East, one from Nigeria, one from Russia, and now this BZG group, right? Every single time, they're all time wasters or they didn't have the best interests of the club at heart. There's always something, right? How unlucky do you think my... A man who was <laughs> actively trying to sell a football club has had... 12, 13, 14 interest, allegedly interested parties in buying the club and has somehow never quite been able. This is, by the way, astute businessman Mike Ashley who buys and sells businesses every single year. Yeah, there's big sports direct mugs and stuff. If Mike Ashley is evidently just incapable or unwilling to do anything that resembles action, this is my segue, should the Newcastle United fandom take action via boycott slash we've protest. Seen, yeah, we've seen protests in the past. I've been at protests before, mostly half-hearted ones about Pardew. Um, I've been at one or two where it's just genuinely just getting annoyed about the Ashley situation. But in the past, his mismanagement of the club has got us relegated, but then, you know, he has gone, oh, well, I'm trying to run a business here. There's 15 million for Gale. There's, we'll try and get out of it the first attempt. You can see that he's got at least the business interests at heart, like the bottom line is there for him. Even if he's got no, he's got no idea how to run the club. He won't put the right people in the right positions. His mismanagement of it is always what gets us involved. I've said to you, we got relegated like once in eighty years, yeah, and we've been relegated twice in twelve under him. So like, it's just, it's not that we've got this. If you're watching this, and you're not on your Castle fans. It's not just like, oh, where is this? We want to be like in the top four. Like, no, literally, we just want to spend the money the club makes. Like. Leicester, Leicester won the league, yes, but how long would ago? would like to be a Leicester, Everton or West Ham. Yeah. And that is absolutely because that's not at all the, unrealistic. The revenue we generate is comparable to them. Yes. I remember, like, we'll get, I'll get back to the protest thing in a second, but I just remember last season, we were getting linked with a couple of players and it was down the pub and my mate was like, oh, yeah, yeah, that'll never happen. Looking forward to seeing them playing for, like, Tottenham or West Ham in a couple of years. And I was like, you're kidding. Like, Brighton and Huddersfield will buy them? Like, they'll spend, yeah. like, 20, 30 million on them? That's, that's who we financially compete with now. But... He's always had the best interest, at least of the business at heart. He's not wanted to lose loads of money doing it. But genuinely, letting Rafa go without offering him any more money or like letting him have control of the money he was spending, letting Perez go for 30 million without any 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 option of a replacement because you haven't got a manager and you can't buy players. Letting Rondon go when you could have had him in like January. It's now just like, it's now gone past the point of no return. Like it's, 
You Doom. Fa you're facing oblivion now because if if we go, he's not going to be there to like shovel a hundred million at like getting us back out of the championship this time. But if we go down, that's probably it, and we'll get sold for a fraction of the price to a consortium or something. It will just Sheffield Wednesday or Leeds United us for a couple of years. So it's 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 genuinely mind blowing all this for, for me in terms of. I mean, I've, I'm I'm more and more used to it now, but. You know, I've been lucky enough to go to some games and they played some great football. I watched them beat Man City, the Premier League winners. Mm. Watched them beat them uh, at St. James's Park last season. And I've watched them play good football. And I've seen, obviously, a, having them to have a decent manager at the helm. And, you know, you speak to people who are fans of other clubs and Newcastle United are revered. They have this incredible support. You look at how big the stadium is and that is packed out all the time. Mm. And yet, <laughs> not they, being five weeks. No, nope. yeah, and that, yeah, they, they just constantly shoot themselves in the foot. They constantly it's this self sabotage that they've got. You I mean you you had a season ticket last season, and I've, then you I've, turned around to me and said, "Yeah, I've dropped my season ticket in this year because good." Uh, and the protest thing we're going to get onto, I can't justify giving Mike Ashley more of my money, and it's not an it's not an ins, an unsubstantial amount. Like this year, yeah. they've let Rafa walk. But they've put the season ticket prices up. We've got the most expensive replica kit. Bear in mind, we're owned by a sporting brand <laughs> magnate. The guy owns Lonsdale and owns the cheapest sports retail shops in the country. And Newcastle fans have the most expensive replica kit. How? 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 It's how? just a total joke. In my opinion, uh, the fans should boycott. And it's not without precedent. Um, was it Tottenham Hotspur in 2015? where the attendance was the lowest in years and years, 40,000, because people decided enough was enough. It was bang in the midst of the Carver era. Like, we can't go on like this. We need to make game? our voices heard. I was at that game. So what happened after that was Mike Ashley pretty much crapped the bed, flung loads of money and at McLaren, Steve McLaren yeah. of all managers. So there is a precedent for this kind of thing, making an appreciable impact on the way that business is run. Mm. Um, and I think when people say, I think the counter argument is, Mike Ashley doesn't care about season ticket money because he gets all of that's dwarfed by the TV yeah, revenue money. Yes. I think it completely misses the point of the psychological profile of the man. Yeah. He never met a tenor he didn't like. Like he's a man consumed and defined by greed. Literally every single penny matters to him. He's not gonna say, all right, well, I'm gonna lose like a couple of million here. That's not in his DNA. He will care deeply about this. It's a fraction of the TV, I admit this, but I think, again, he will miss that money. He will desire well. that money. Yeah, absolutely. The early estimates are something like 10,000 season tickets haven't been renewed. And something like across the course of the season and the money that people spend in the ground and towards the club as a result of having a season ticket, they reckon that's like a loss in the millions. Because obviously the actual season ticket money itself will be it's 10,000 times 600. 600,000? If I got that wrong, that's 60. No, it's 6 million. Yes, six mi at least 6 million he's lost already wow. from the lack of season tickets being renewed. So, But again, it's just it's one of them. Like I don't want to have to protest against Mike Ashley and boycott the games and all this because I just want this takeover to be resolved and then we can all move on with it. But it's just, you can just see it. I mean, people joked about this at the time. Like You can just see it coming now. Rafa's contract's coming to an end. There's this summer where we're going to be expecting to spend a bit of money. And all of a sudden, this takeover comes out of nowhere. And it's like, well, we can't really do, we can't, we can't really do anything because takeovers there. Well, God, we can't renew Rafa's contract because we don't know if they're going to want him. Yeah. Blah 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 blah. Now it's going to be like, well, the transfer window's going to shut in like four weeks' time. Oh, sorry, we didn't get any players, and there was all that takeover stuff going we on. We got a loan e in though, so it's all good. It's all going to be done with the last two weeks, and yet again, clubs are going to know that we're absolutely desperate, and they're going to they're going to put absurd valuations on players because they'll know we'll have to pay it, otherwise we're stuck, and then they just simply won't pay it because that's not how he does business, and it'll be. I'm genuinely expecting one of the most miserable seasons after I was so... Like, I literally thought we are going to get Kylian Mbappe. Yeah. That's, people People worked me up into that on that plane. Deluded like, Jordi narrative deluded, continues. Deluded Jordi, sorry. Like, let's, that, let's, sorry, let's, there, let's, sorry carry there is one flip side to the argument. I've got an acquaintance called Dan Howe, and I was staunchly saying everyone should protest. Like, enough's enough. Like, you're just... You are cutting this body by the 700th and 800th cut yeah. in this process of death by a thousand cuts. But then he responded to somebody on Twitter saying something to the effect of, my 10-year-old kid doesn't know any other version of Newcastle in this. We have a fabulous day out on yep. a Saturday. We bond through this. That's what ultimately a football club is. And I just couldn't begrudge him yeah, of his Saturday this is, bonding time with his lad, you it, know? It was the only... I was. I had a hundred reasons of like staying or going, right? 99 of them with just Jackie's season ticket. And the only thing I had 
to talk me around from it was I take my goddaughter to the games. And that's, that's it. She is six. She does not know any other. You know, she sat through all of that. She sat. She got a first season ticket last year and watched the worst start of a Premier League campaign Newcastle <laughs> have ever had at home. And she didn't mind. It was just day out for her. She just wanted like a bag of sweets and to watch Paul Dummett run around. Like <laughs> that was it for her. So I've I've jacked my season ticket in, but my mate who's a father is like I I literally can't. Like yeah. it would. I'm having to weigh up whether 19 home games where she comes home crying is like worse than me having to tell her I'm not renewing a season ticket, which she won't. Like she under she can understand when they get beat because she understands football. Yeah. I don't know if she'll understand me saying, look, I'm not getting you a season ticket this year because I have a problem with the mismanagement at the top level of the yeah. club. I did tell him, just jack it in and say that Mike actually said you can't have it anymore, which is not a complete lie. No. It would make her hate him. Yeah. She hasn't, t- apparently she cried for three hours when uh, Rafa left and he hasn't had the heart to tell her that Perez has gone yet. I was like that with David Kelly. <laughs> that was my analogy. Oh. Um, to, to An attempt to briefly lighten the mood. No. Don't. If, no, let's not, I'm not going to say if this takeover goes through or whatever, but if you could get in a, a, a reasonable manager, who would you like to see take over? For me, I couldn't give a toss. It's like, I always go back to the Sir Bobby famous quote, what is a club in any ways? Uh-huh. And if some guy who clearly has been brought in as a mercenary under the auspices of some, you know, foreign coach or whoever, like, what's a goal anymore? Like, I don't want to get too melodramatic about it, but what does that mean if it's just staving off more yeah. dread? Like, what ultimately is a goal anymore? I just, I don't feel like I could celebrate at this point in time. So for me, it absolutely does not matter. Cleary? I will say whoever comes in, I'd like them to have like a very, very, very short contract, 12 months. Yeah. Literally that. Yeah, prove yourself. Yeah. Um, not just not just for that, just because I'd like to think that by the time that contract's up, the club will be a completely different club. You know what I mean? Like, they'll not be lumbered with somebody because I'm hopeful that things will be better or they've changed or the ownership or a takeover will happen in 12 months. If I don't know, of all the names I've seen touted around so far, Souza, who was it? Uh, Swansea, he's he might get something out of some of the players they've got. The problem is Rafa's never, he was never able to build a side, really. Like, the first time it really felt like his team was sort of the back half of that season where you had, like, Rondon, Almiron, yeah. uh, Key, Longstaff. But whereas you look at like that squad, it's like made up of like Pardew players, McLaren players, like it's all just him cobbling together what he could. With we're doomed regardless because Rafa Benitez had an incredible genius trick of making Kieran Clark into like John Terry for a season. Like he could get virtually oh, any so, centre yeah. half and make them f- like a formidable presence at the back. And without his genius defensive nows, we've got nothing. Less than nothing. We're doomed regardless. I is think is the, there any, any hope of, of them staying up? Even if it's just the caveat of, as we've well, previously things, things discussed, pre- worse teams being in the as Premier As things League. presently stand, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because, I mean, there's no manager. There's, they've lost both their goal threats. Nobody else in that side got goals. There's no season. 12th man. There's no 12th man. The, to be fair, I've got to say, I, was at the, like, I went to every home game last season and the resolve in the stands to get behind the team, even when they were getting beat, and to not trudge out like I remember the Wolves game where we really should have got something went down to 10 men at 1-1 and it still looked like we'd win that game and we gave away an absolute sickener 93rd minute goal we should have had a penalty then they went straight up to the other end and scored and people were trudging out like god they tried there like they really yeah. they really should have won that and it was oh god blah, 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 blah. like the the mood in the stands was different people would people would get like you were at the City game yeah conceded to the best team in the league after 30 seconds yeah. Do you hear any grumbles? No. Everybody was still behind them and like got them through that. And it's just to go from that to this in the space of a summer. And I said, like I said this to a few people, I was really worried about this summer because I worry that when I'm old and grey and crusty, right, I'm going to go, do you know what it is? We had this summer once, right? Rafa wanted to sign a new contract. We'd just gone and broken a record transfer fee. We had a load of money to spend. We'd just been on a run of form that had us like the fifth or sixth best team in the league for the second half of the season. We had Almiron in. Rondon was available for next to now. Perez was hitting the form of his life. Sean Longstaff was coming through. We had five brilliant centre-backs for the first time in the club's history. All they had to do was either put his hand in his pocket or sell the club and would have gone on and done something. And he but did now. Anyway, so we're nearly at Wembley for the FA Vars final. So uh, that's, <laughs> that's enough from your old man. Yeah. What do you? Uh, we know, obviously know what you think happens next. What do you think happens next? Uh, continuing stasis and dread in which you virtually hate every single minute of your life unless you arrive at the position I'm at where you simply stop caring. I used to get so wound up, man. I used to get so wound up. Joe Kinnear, John Carver, like these people <laughs> gave yeah. me actual like temper tantrums and fits and nightmares. 
I've stopped caring. And the worrying thing is that I'm not the only one. Like, mm. anecdotally, I know at least two mates who've jacked in their season tickets who probably cared more about Newcastle United than I ever have. The soul of that club, the spirit, is just eroding by the day. And unless something happens, my opinion is nothing will happen. I simply will not open myself up to the possibility because it hurts far too much. I'd say that you've touched on something there that really does feel like something is genuinely different this time because ever since Ashley's taken over, like he's never, people go, oh, you weren't complaining when you got your fifth. Yes, we were. We yeah. still hated him. And then that's the one we finished fifth. He went out and we were one, we could have finished in the Champions yeah, League I'm spot last saying, season. Yeah. On the last day, we could have snuck the Champions League spot and we finished fifth and he went out and he bought Werner Nita for four million. And that was like, we were like, what are you, what are you doing? Like, we're not expecting to win the league next year, but like, Consolidate. Yeah, consolidate. At least, at least double figures of millions he's never, of pounds. He's spent. never, ever been popular, ever. No. And there's always been people, oh, I'm not going while he's still there. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm not going to bother. I'm not shopping at Sports Direct. These decisions have always been made up until now by people for whom it's very easy to. Mm. Whereas this season, it's people who like, you're hearing about people who've had season tickets for 17, yeah. 18, 19, 20 years, not going anymore. You're hearing about old guys who've like been going since they were standing on the terraces who like are, are given up on it. It's the... The people who are finally reaching breaking point is the people who you thought would never, ever reach breaking point. And it's only stuff like, I can't explain it to my daughter, yeah. why we're not going. It's only those kind of things that are stopping people giving it up. Worrying times indeed. Let us know your thoughts in the comments or on Twitter at WhatCultureFC. Watch there. You can follow all three of us. You can follow Adam Cleary at... Adam Cleary, C L E R Y. You can follow Michael Sidgwick at Mostly Wrestling Crack, so there's no point. M Sidgwick. <laughs> you can follow me at Adam Wilborn. You can find out what it's like. Unless Vince takes us over. <laughs> Shut up, man. <laughs> follow, me at, follow me at Adam Wilborn and uh, yeah. It's what culture FC. I forgot as well yesterday. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, you, welcome to the life of a Chesterfield fan, basically. <laughs> at what culture FC if you want to follow all, all of us. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and make sure you subscribe to What Culture Football on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts from for daily wrestling podcasts. My thanks to Michael and to Adam. Thank you for watching or listening, and we will see you soon.